Hey guys, what's going on? It's Knock, and welcome along to episode number three of the Knockcast. And of course, this show is something that I don't do on my own. So as always, we have got the fabulous Deathwish808 with us. So how you been, buddy? How are you? How you doing? What's happening? The same, well, more or less. Uh, kind of everybody's gearing up for Thanksgiving tomorrow. Get ready to... Gonna add on an extra pound or two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. obviously you're you're out of town for uh, you said to me for Thanksgiving. Yeah, I probably I came out today to my mom's and so I'll you know just say I'm already here for tomorrow and then I'll probably stay until Friday or so. Mix things up a little bit, you know. Yeah, I think I remember, like, last year, I think you sent me a, a picture, actually, of, uh, of like, the table at your uh, your folks' house, and uh, I think there was uh, quite a bit of food of, uh, that was put on and uh, on the table, so I know we're just kind of in the introductory stage, so I don't kind of want to really want to branch onto a topic already, but, yeah, so, like, I, like what is or, or how is, like, Thanksgiving? I mean, obviously, from a... Give give us kind of like a perspective from like a for, for an outsider who doesn't celebrate Thanksgiving and what it's all about. Just kind of give us a as as much as the rambling man can a brief overview of you know how how it's the sort of the, the day goes down and and what you guys get up to. I mean, it's it's pretty simple. I'd say for the majority of people. It's just an excuse to get together. I mean, like a, a lot of people will will have wine and beer and drinks and whatever. But uh, I'd say in general, we're not like what you'll see like in movies and stuff is people going around a table giving thanks what they're thankful for and that sort of stuff. Yeah, and th that does happen. Uh, it hasn't been a thing. That's not something we really do. It's just us getting together which has gotten to be less and less people. So, yeah, it's just just, just having a bunch of food, and then we all take home leftovers. And, you know, but it's just about getting together and with the family and... Having some quality time kind of thing. Yeah, yeah just, you know, having fun. Just, you know, and that's, I think that's basically what most people do. So I, I guess kind of like it, to, to me, it kind of sounds almost like a... Almost like a like, like a Christmas kind of like for for us guys like how we would I mean not that I'm from a big family and not that we kind of like get round and and have a big gathering at Christmas but it's the sort of thing that I get like from Christmas where you know everybody comes together and you, you know you sit around the table you eat a shit ton of food and feel shit about half an hour after because you've eaten too much and then slump in a chair and go to sleep for a bit. Uh, yeah, we're a little different on Christmas. Like uh, Christmas. We we don't have uh, typically a meal at the table. We'll, we'll have we'll have a lot of like finger feeds. Okay. So, yeah. so, so and then anybody can just go in, grab whatever you want when you feel like it, and eat whenever you want yeah. what you want and all that. So we'll have you know like Christmas we'll have ham and you know we'll have stuff like that. But most part we'll have just uh, deviled eggs and I mean you you name it, all kinds of just random stuff could be. I don't know. You name it. It it just depends depends on the year. Shrimp, uh, things like that. I mean, you just a ton of stuff that you can yeah. just go in and you know that's just, just like look at it like like buffet food kind of thing where you just kind of like put a load of food out on the side and just go and help yourself as and when you kind of want something to eat. Yeah, kind of because we were, you just basically put it all out in the kitchen and then you just grab a plate or whatever, get what you want and. That's about it. And then we hang out in the living room. Uh, then we have for presents. Yeah. And, and then, you know, just BS otherwise. Just have, okay. just have, just have fun kicking it around. And this is, this is kind of the same, except no presents and we eat at the table. Yeah. So, you know, that's the, the major two differences. Yeah. And I think most people I know uh, are like that for, you know, this time of year. So it's, it's just kind of like most of us. But, I, you know, most people I know here and have known pretty much use it as an excuse to get together. Just yeah. kind of like, like the 4th of July, an excuse to blow crap up and 
<laughs> you know, have, have have a cookout, and, and of course, Fourth of July, we're swimming and you know playing outdoor games and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, I, I mean, you know, I'm I, I guess some people are all for kind of open water swimming and, and cold water swimming, but yeah, I'm guessing Thanksgiving's not the ideal time to be jumping in the lake and going for a swim. <laughs> nah, uh, it, unless you want to get uh, you know woken up quite quickly, it, it'll definitely. <laughs> yeah it, it, it'll, it'll definitely up your uh awareness real quick <laughs> I've, yeah, I've, I can I've, I've jumped in as late as this time of year and as early as like march yeah okay. and it's a it's a shocker i mean it's worse than turning on just a straight cold shower i can tell you that yeah but i don't know i don't know how those people do it uh in, in the uh, up in like the northern regions, where it's like a a foot or two thick of ice on a on a on a lake, and they drill a hole in it and and they and they go swimming in that. Yeah, maybe we should um, pick Perfiris's brains on that because I know that they're big on that over in Scandinavia, kind of just going for a bit of a, a an ice ice jumping, ice diving, or whatever they call it, where they just like put a hole in and jump in some freezing cold water. But I guess for them, they um, they come out of the water and go straight into a sauna or a hot tub. So Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you've ever watched uh, Gigi, Gigi Mufi's channel. No. He was a weightlifter, kind of, he, you know, went nuts about it. Of course, he's been on some, on the juice and stuff as well. But so he turned into, you know, bodybuilder, amateur bodybuilder. And all that, he had, you know, he has a pretty big YouTube channel. Okay, and and he's had plenty of uh, well-known guests, uh, like the Mountain from Game of Thrones. Uh, you, you know, just other other well-known like athletes of in weightlifting and arm wrestling, like Devin Larratt. Anyway, it it was all around, uh, or a group of of those kind of people. I think it. I think it was in Finland, I believe, or somewhere in that general vicinity of, of the globe where they they did their workout. They went out and they all go down straight to like this lake. Yeah. And, and it's freezing. And they're like, ah, you know, they go in and they come back out. And yeah, they go into yeah, either like a sauna or a hot tub. <laughs> But I, I can't imagine that that's very nice, though, to be fair. Like, you've just been in a, a cold water environment, like freezing, and then you jump into something that's, like, quite, you know, like a, a warm hot tub. Like, I can't imagine that's particularly great, because I know from experience, like, if I've been, let's say I, I've been outside or just, just making sort of something up here from kind of like experiences. I've been outside and I, let's say I've, I've got a bird bath and it's all frozen over and I've put my hand in and like, I've got my hand like freezing cold, putting it under a like hot water to try and warm it up sometimes isn't the best kind of feeling oh, and no. sensation. So, I mean, going from, like I say, going from a lake to a hot tub or something of, of that kind of magnitude. Um, yeah. I'm not sure it's as pleasurable as it sounds. <laughs> no, the extremes, uh, seeing as how human beings cannot feel temperature, just despite that not sounding legit, we we only feel differences in temperature. Yeah. So, we, like, we we can't put our hand on something and go that that's seventy degrees. Yeah. I mean, to you know, to to a point on certain types of materials, if we're used to doing that. I'd say sure, maybe, but depends on your body temperature because it's kind of like you touch wood and it's, you know, you use like a, what do you call it, a laser, you know, temp reader and uh, you, it, and you touch wood and it's 73 degrees and you touch a piece of metal that's 73 degrees, well, they feel completely different. It's like touching carpet at 73, you know, it's... Yeah. It, they all feel at different temperatures due to the amount of heat that transfers out of your hand. So we can't actually feel temperature. We can only feel temperature changes. That's why it's bad when you're really cold and you put it in a hot. It, yeah. It, it's painful. I learned, I learned that as a kid from coming out playing in the snow. 
and I'm like, my hands were absolutely frozen, and I, and I stuck them under warm, just warm water, and it absolutely killed my hands. Yeah. And I, I turned the hot water off completely and just ran cold water. And it felt warm in comparison yeah. to my hands. So, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's the same as a lot of things, though. It's like it, it comes down to, I guess, A, the individual, because everybody is different. But yeah. it comes down to, obviously, the, the relative temperatures. So, as you just kind of said there, you know, you've come from a cold environment. So, actually, that cold environment is colder than your cold water tap. So, the cold water tap, in that sense, is going to feel as warm as probably a hot or a warm water tap when your hands are at a normal temperature. So, it's just yeah. all sort of relative, isn't it? Right. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, but you, yeah you got to learn that early on, or, boy, are you in for some pain. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I, I still remember the first time I ever did that as a little kid, and oh my god, I was screaming like, ah! <laughs> I mean, yeah, I was yeah. probably like, you know, four four years old or something, and stuck my hands in warm water. Well, I mean, you know, logic says it's the right thing to do, but it really isn't the right thing to do at all. <laughs> nah. But if you if it's if you've only been in a short amount of time, like when when they go in there, just kind of in and out. They're not. They're not in there like they're not doing, like the ice baths like some athletes do, and then going into something hot. They're yeah, just, they're just in and out. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, I think I, I asked you earlier, uh, but that was before you started recording. Was you know, how have you been doing, and how have things been going on your side of the pond? Yeah. Uh, well. Um been uh interesting since we last sat down and, and did the podcast obviously we um we kind of speak during the live streams as uh my sidekick and co-host and, and stuff so uh we've kind of talked about it a little bit but uh yeah as you were kind of well i've kind of been not in the, not in the best kind of the month i was um found myself down at the uh er room uh, maybe I'll we'll branch onto some more details because uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, screwed my my back up. Um, you know what you actually did? Well, I've been thinking back. Um, I mean, just to kind of bring everybody else up to speed, um, I went out in my car and I pulled up to the place I was going, and I opened my door. I swung my legs round, and my back just kind of like went into like the such an almighty spasm like and and just pain in my back i couldn't hardly walk um so on the face of it it seems like something really silly but i think it's possibly something i did about a week before that and i think it's kind of like almost like a delayed reaction the actual like tweak or the injury coming out because about a week before that, I was helping some friends move some sofas. Um, they were like so one somebody had bought them, but we were delivering them. So we took them to this this house, and it was kind of like down. There was no front door at this house, and you had to like go like round the back to get it in the house. And it was down this really narrow kind of like alleyway, I guess you'd call it. And to get the sofas down, we actually had to kind of like lift the sofas like above our heads, above the fence, like either sides, so that it would go down because it wasn't wide enough to take the sofa in between the fences. So I kind of think that maybe I did something when I moved the furniture and then for whatever reason, that little simple everyday movement just set it off. Yeah, definitely. Definitely a high possibility, especially if you're not used to lifting at all. Like if you're, because I know you walk, but if you if you never do any kind of weight training or resistance no. training, then yeah, that could that could have definitely hundred percent been what triggered it. And then it just a matter of I've done stuff like that to where I, when I've gotten literally went to bed, felt fine, went to get up out of bed, and boom. Yeah, back, lock, back locked up, and I'm like, oh my god! But yeah, it's it's just, it's usually stems from something else, like you were talking about. So that's probably what happened. But yeah, I guess you'd probably tell them what what you what you did from at that point when you uh, got that uh, nice notification that your back wasn't happy. <laughs> yeah, it certainly wasn't happy. Um, I mean, like the 
me like the first the first couple of days so this happened on a monday um so i, I saw out the monday i saw out the tuesday as you know i like for well i've got a, a sit stand desk here so for work i can kind of alternate between sitting down and standing up which i think was probably good because then you're not kind of just in one position you can kind of keep moving which i kind of feel felt like the more i moved the better it felt the wednesday rolled around and it got a lot worse and i went to bed the wednesday evening and i just I, I don't know what happened on the wednesday but my back was just in a constant spasm um to the point where it was bringing me down bringing me like drawing me to tears so over in the uk we have a service called 111 which is instead of ringing 999 for emergency you can ring up and you can speak to clinicians over the phone and explain what was going on they booked me uh, an appointment at the UTC at, at the hospital, which is like the urgent treatment center, if people don't know what the acronyms are. So I got this appointment for, I think it was like 11 o'clock at night. Because I had to get out of bed up and get up and get downstairs and everything, I was like, right, I'm just going to get up. I'm going to take the pain. I'm going to get downstairs. We're just going to get me in the car. We're going to go to the hospital and that'll be that sort of thing. So I'm there. So we rock up to hospital half an hour earlier to the appointment that I've been booked. I go to the accident emergency department, their little checking desk, and I said, oh, I've got an appointment. And they were like, so can you explain what the problem is? I was like, well, I've just been through this on the phone, but okay, well, explained everything that happened. They turned around to me and they said, okay, don't go to your appointment. Instead, go over to that reception desk there for the main accident and emergency Book yourself in there because it's your back they might need to do a scan so i was like okay that's fine this was half past 10 at night okay so 20 minutes later i went through to see the triage nurse she kind of like did all my stats and things and uh, explained again to her what had happened she goes okay we'll get you some diazepam to see if that relieves the spasming in your back Hour and a half later, I've been sat there in the waiting room, still nothing. Twelve, so it was twelve o'clock. She was like, "Did nothing help?" I was like, "Nope." She goes, "Okay, I'll see if I can get you some morphine." So then she gave me some morphine. Yeah, they don't do that every year. Doctor, I was a fan. I, I was given that way back when with with hydrocodone, but that was back in the nineties. Yeah. And yeah, the that the muscle relaxers, the diazepam, it didn't work for me either. So. Just before I had the morphine, they were like, okay, if that didn't work, we'll, we're going to draw some bloods from you. So they put a cannula in my arm and like took some bloods. And then they're like, okay, so just go and wait. This was 12 o'clock. And then one o'clock came, then two o'clock came, then three o'clock, then four o'clock, then five o'clock, then six o'clock, and then seven o'clock. And I'm still sat in the waiting room, still in pain, trying to like every, I, I don't know, I, I couldn't get comfy in the chair I was sat in, every sort of, half an hour 45 minutes i was just trying to get out of my chair and i mean it was, it was even to the point where when i was sat down just like i couldn't physically even move my legs at point it's like just trying to move my legs so like imagine like you're sat on the chair with like your legs like flat and so you, you sat really straight in the chair and i was just like trying to move my leg forward a little bit and even i couldn't do that like the pain of it finally about I think it was about half past seven on the Thursday morning, considering I've been now in A&E for nine hours. I finally get to see the doctor. Uh, he goes over everything, checks me out, and he's like, okay, uh, I don't think there's anything related or anything. I think it's purely uh, muscular. Uh, we'll, say, we'll give you some more pain relief, some more antibiotics. So they sent me to the waiting, the waiting room, and they gave me all my meds in the waiting room in front of everybody else who was waiting for stuff. So that was some more diazepam. I had some That's uh, more morphine. I had uh, an IV drip of paracetamol and um, they gave me something. <laughs> they gave me something else in suppository form, which I'm not really <laughs> sure what it was. They, they, they gave you that in front of everybody in the waiting room too. <laughs> oh no, no, no. They, 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 <laughs> they, they, they were, they, the nurse, the, the male nurse came out and he was like, um, okay, so you know what this is? I was like, yeah, he's explained what it is. And he was like, do you want to do it yourself? And I was like, look, <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to do it myself because I probably won't do it right. So just 
just just get on with it i was like <laughs> yeah just do it <laughs> so anyway I, I was like yeah so i had all my meds it took probably about 15 20 minutes for the all the paracetamol iv drip to go in uh the doctor came back out and he's like okay you you can go home it's like okay uh, and he was just like, okay, so if you get home, you can take uh, cocodamol with paracetamol. You can dose with ibuprofen as well because it doesn't uh, mix with the two. But if you're taking cocodamol and paracetamol, um, you can basically mix and match but only have the equivalent of one of the doses because it's kind of like the same family of tablets. So, yeah, I got home about 9.30 the, on the Thursday morning. Thursday was fine. I mean, I was I, I got home and I was pretty much high as a kite from all of the medication that they'd given me. Couldn't really pinpoint what it was that had helped me because they'd given me so much in one short space of time. But then Friday came around and it was like, well, shit, I'm back to square one here. I can't get out of bed again. My back really hurts. And the hospital hadn't prescribed me anything like to come home. It was literally just like, you'll be fine. Just deal yourself with over-the-counter meds that you can buy yourself and, and everything will be fine. But... I was like, well, I, I can't put up with this. So I went to see my, my local GP. They just managed to prescribe me some diazepam and morphine and some stronger ibuprofen sort of stuff. So yeah, I kind of took that over the weekend. Everything started to feel better. So I weaned myself off the addictive stuff quite quickly because I didn't want to be on that for too long. No doubt. And yeah, week, week and a half later, my traumatic experience was over. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess like the... The talking point and conversation from this, I guess, is that everybody kind of says to me who's not from the UK, oh, you've got such a great health system, blah de blah de blah Our health system has uh, gone to shit, like, seriously. For having to wait that long to see somebody when you're in like, agonizing pain is not good. I was texting you when I was down at um, accident emergency and, you know, was yeah. asking how I was and stuff, and um, I know you said that if that was you over there, although you have to pay for it, you'd be kind of in and out within the hour kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, it it varies for for you know depending on the hospital, but the ones the ones around me, anyone you go to or any one of the real hospitals that you go to, I mean, they literally have billboards with the wait times. Uh, yeah, it, it, you know an LED form and stuff, and and it's almost usually pretty much like two to ten minutes for the most part, and and for the ER, and and then that means your your paperwork's done, you're you're back in there, and then they'll have nurses checking you, and then they'll have a doctor come by, boom boom boom, but yeah, and it depends on your insurance too, so I won't say. I know, I know that's a, a big a big thing on the internet is yeah America has a a really horrible healthcare system you ought to be more like you know Europe we do it why can't you and Canada we, you know my, my nephew he's a dual citizen in Germany and here he he much prefers it here than there yeah uh, and uh, I if you don't have insurance yet, if if you get into anything big like some kind of surgery or something, yeah, it's going to cost you quite a lot of money. But you you will get taken care of, and you will get taken care of quick. You will not be waiting. Yeah, and because it's and even if you're homeless, I mean, boom, they just they they'll just call it a wash, but they're not going to let somebody die. Although I gotta I gotta say some places. That is all. It's getting worse here too. On, like I said, depending on the, the, where you are and what hospital it is. But around me, they're pretty daggone good. I got I got three major hospitals that all have. I mean, yeah, they're fantastic. Yeah, as far as, as far as if you have any problems. Speaking of that, uh, by my niece, uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, went outside to go play on a swing or something or, or play or ride her bike. And she was going to put on her boots. And my brother said, well, you know, it's been a while since you wore those boots. Let me check them. You know, he checked them and everything was all good. She went out and played. And then the next day, you know, it had been less than 24 hours later. She wanted to do the same thing, put the boots on, came back in, and it was like, my foot hurts. 
and it's like, okay, let's take a look at it. And on the top of her foot, it, it, he said it looked kind of like a, just like a mosquito bite. Okay. But, but as a little bit of time went on, it went, it got very painful and, and it was swelling up more and more and it was going up her leg. And it, once it got going up her leg, you know, it got to going up her leg when I took her to the, to the hospital. She's been in there for, I think this is the third day, and she's supposed to be coming out tomorrow. Well, it turned out to be a black widow. Oh, yikes. So, yeah, when after she came in and all that, he checked the beat. And I guess he dumped it, like shook it, and black widow came out. Of course, killed it, stuck it in a bag and, yeah. and took it with him. And what blew my mind, though, she, she should have been in and out, but as common as black widows are around here uh, i don't know if you're, you're from, how familiar you are with black widows but not very they're, they're they're the second most venomous spider that we have number one is the brown recluse which you, they they are like their name says they're very reclusive they're in dark areas and you typically will never see them unless you're going in places you just you really don't want to go in the first place but like like caves yeah. and things yeah and and you know, well yeah i mean they just they hide underneath stuff and things like that black widow is kind of similar but you'll you'll see them a lot more often and they have a they have an hourglass red hourglass shape they're they're shiny black very distinctive looking, so uh, and and they're and it depends on the person. Now she's she's quite small, so it it ended up working its way all the way up into her stomach, and and it was causing her severe pain all the way up. You know, had that fit her whole leg, fit up to up into her torso, and causing her muscles to spasm and things like that. And yeah, they've. But but the thing where I was going, the thing that blew my mind was no hospital, no place anywhere around they caught around had an antivenom for it. Despite the, you saying like it's quite a common, it's, it's very common. Yeah, and that's something they should have. I mean, that would be like going to Australia and not having any antivenom for the you know spiders and snakes yeah. and the, you know stuff. I mean, you gotta have that stuff. Yeah, I, I can't believe they didn't have it other because if they did, when they went in, she could have just gotten that and went home, and that would have been yeah. the end of it. But she's had to go through this crap for days now. But hopefully, she'll be feeling better enough to get up and and time to you know at least come over for Thanksgiving, you know. But yeah, it's it's crazy how things are everywhere, and it just depends on what kind of medical issue you have so yeah and i, I kind of get it, it's difficult i mean i'm i obviously only looking from an outsider's point of view but what i find like quite crazy is and, and i get that everybody is judged on a case-by-case -case basis and some people are more critical than other people but when you kind of look at the like the people who are in a and e there's the certain people that you just look at and you think, well, if the doctor just came out and gave them like five, 10 minutes of time, diagnosed them, they could like just get rid of them and clear them off and send them home. Going back to October when Ariella broke her, she fractured one of the, the end bones of her, of her wrist and she had to have a cast on. But we took her down to the, the emergency room and we kind of, we must have been sat there for about three hours before we did before once we booked in and before anything happened, and we knew, like literally, all we're waiting for is for somebody to tell us like to go and get an X-ray because we knew it would need to be X-rayed. Right. But it's like, but why, why is that process so slow? Because you know you're not going to get to see a doctor until you've had an X-ray. So rather than send us to sit in a waiting room for three hours to be wait told to go and get an x-ray, why don't you just send us for have an x-ray, get the x-ray done, and then we wait to see the doctor. Because no, no word of a lie, literally, we waited three hours. We were told to go for the x-ray. There was a 10-minute wait at the x-ray. I took her in. We came back, sat in the waiting room. 20 minutes later, the doctor called us through. 
said, oh, it's broken, you need a cast. We went to the plaster room, got a cast on, we were sent home. So, like, we were sat there for three hours doing nothing, but from going for the x-ray to going home was probably, like, 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. So we would have skipped that whole wait. Like, here, here they go, uh, yeah, uh, you're going straight from the waiting room to the to the x-ray room, getting the x-ray done. Once that's done, you're going into a, you know, like, curtained-off uh, area for patients. Yeah. And, and where you have a bed, and you'll be chilling there, wait for the doctor to come come by. He would come by, look at the x-rays. Yep, uh, get a fracture here, blah, blah, blah. Here, bam, slap a, you know, cast on it, and off you go. You know, yeah. come, back, come back in six weeks, and we'll cut it off. Yeah, like I say, I know it's, it's sometimes easy to make judgments and criticize when you're on the outside looking in. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I, I know from experience, like, when I've done things but in the past and I've had to go for x-rays, you kind of, they send you for an x-ray and then you just sit there and you sit there and you sit there and you're thinking, but if nothing's wrong, why can't somebody just have like a, spend two minutes to look at that x-ray, say, oh, everything's fine and send me home. But surely rather than making me like sit, if I've got a cubicle, sit in a cubicle for three hours for the doctor then to come and tell me, oh, nothing's wrong, you can go home. Come and tell me and free up that resource and give it to somebody who does need it. I just, and like I said, I know everybody is done on a case by case basis and some people are more urgent than others, but maybe sometimes there should be more emphasis put on the people who aren't as urgent just to turn them through the door a little bit quicker. Yeah, I thought and about then, that too. And then, and then the doctors can actually spend more time with the people who need it. I, I don't know. I mean, like I say, the, the whole, NHS and hospital situation. I obviously I can only speak for my local one, but yeah. having like have two experiences down there quite recently, one with my daughter and one with me, it's it's not good. It's not good at all. Like you when we went with our daughter, we literally walked up to the reception desk and it was just like it's just like a war zone. Like you walk into that waiting room and as I said, I, I was treated in the waiting room with my medications, but there are, there's just people sat in the waiting room on drips and there's people like all over the place, like sitting on wheelchairs and it's just, yeah, it's just, it's, it's not good. Considering one of the biggest, not to go full political or anything, but one of the biggest kind of points of Brexit and leaving the EU was supposedly that we, the millions of pounds that we paid every month or every week or whatever it was to the eu as like membership towards everything in the eu oh no that will push all that to the nhs and you know make sure everybody's all funded and everything and you know there's plenty of money to see the people and treat the people well, i don't know where that money is because i don't think it's uh clearly not filtering through to the nhs and the services clearly it's yeah, um it seems seems how that's that's the kind of magical thing with money that seems to happen kind of Kind of everywhere. It's like here. It's like okay. Back in the uh, early nineties, I believe, late eighties, early nineties, our state started a state lottery and said we're going to use all that money and it's going to go to education and and infrastructure for you know roads and blah blah blah. And then they've added more and more lotteries. The lottery's gotten bigger. Now, you know, multi-state national lotteries, this, that, the other. The schools are no better. And they got, they have to stay in so many millions given to the school system. Well, you have taken in how many billions? Yeah. And, and, and you're saying, you think 20 million to the school system that was already short 50 million? To start with, and the teachers are already underpaid. That you okay? And now they're trying to they're adding more and more little casinos, which that used to be non-existent. You had to go to either Las Vegas or Atlantic City. Yeah, and yeah, now now it's, they're they're moving in, and and then here comes the crime. Crime rate's going to go up, along with a lot of other things. And make the poor people poor and rich people richer. That's the way it, way it works. But anyway, yeah, 
it's it's so many things that we we know like the, the average person knows what's going to happen when things but but you can't stop you, you can try to vape but there's just too many idiots to battle sometimes yeah that's that just seems to be the problem i think it depends over here as well it, it and i'm sure it's not just over here but like where i am it's well, I'm sure, but it depends where you live and what the culture is like where you live as to kind of how people decide what they're going to do with like their votes and stuff so yeah like brett again i don't want to like go too political but right looking back to the 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 brexit vote where i live was the the highest place that voted to leave the eu like the highest percentage of people in boston was basically yeah we, we were the highest people and the the problem is where our where we live all of our industry around us is well most of the industry around here is agricultural so it's all like kind of farming and flowers and, and bits and pieces but none of the local people actually want to do the work so we end up with a lot of migrants who do come in and do the work and uh, what's happened over the years is the more the migrants have come in the more people have kind of got a bit disgruntled with it so when brexit came along i'm just speaking kind of like as a, as a general kind of thing here right. every everybody was kind of like well because there were everybody's mis misinformed about brexit Brexit's going to uh, get rid of all these uh, migrant workers, and you know we we get our town back, sort of thing. So, I think a lot a lot of the the voting percentages and the voting around here for Brexit was done by people who were misinformed as to what was actually going to happen um, by leaving the EU. Now, oh, that's so common. Just propaganda and misinformation, disinformation. Yeah, it's super common, and 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 you got half the people that are just believe what they see, and there's literally people who I've heard of through other people that that work the polls, where they had no idea who they were going to vote for, and and just basically they they picked the person that they were most familiar with the name. <laughs> I mean, like the, the dumbest. You might as well not even vote at that point. Yeah, right? I mean, if, if you're going to rock up to the polling station and go into your booth and then go, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, I'm going to pick that one, then, yeah, you, you may as well just not have bothered. That's, that's, that's making the system worse. That's not that's not how democracy should work. You're making, making a misinformed choice. Yeah, which, I um, mean, or a completely uninformed choice at yeah. that. And it, it sad, and then you got the ones who vote one party or another, and then no matter what, so they don't even they they might not know anything about anything. They just vote for a particular party, no matter what, down the line, and just because it's easy, they don't have to think. You know, it's like, oh my god, okay, all these people should not be allowed to vote. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, That's anyway. Not, go into too much politics yeah that was um well I, let, let's let's maybe go on to something else because i mean we're at like 40 minutes and we're technically only just finishing up on the intro so this is going to be a doozy of an episode isn't it <laughs> <laughs> yeah I was, I was thinking about um I, it's, it's been a, a a long it's a it's been a, a thing that's come up a lot on you know, I've seen it come up on Reddit and it, you name it, YouTube, wherever. And and it's always an interesting topic to me, uh, which is, I don't know if you want to uh, go into it, but... We'll give it a go. You know, who would win between a silverback gorilla, or lion, or a tiger? Even though a, a tiger would... there when a, when a tiger fights a lion, it absolutely obliterates a lion. But lions also are not usually alone, whereas tigers are typically lion hunters, but they're just much more powerful. And then you got also, okay, how about a grizzly bear? 
So all very strong. Which which one do you think would win if they were in a battle? And it's usually the way I've seen it is it, it, people usually take it as as they are in reality in nature, and then and then you got to what the side I'm looking at is as if they were forced into like a a cage match, they couldn't run away. And and they knew like they 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 had the one understanding that they had, they had to use whatever they had as an advantage, like the gorilla being its strength and and its uh its bite force. It has huge canines, even though they eat they don't eat meat. They eat leaves and berries and shit. Uh, but but see, so they don't. But they don't bite. Like whereas a lion, that's they they go for the throat. They t- they take down huge badass, you know, wildebeest and this and that that are just insane, and they just grab them by the throat and hold on until they fall down, and you know they're done. Yeah, I get that, but I mean, all right. So thinking about like lions as opposed to tigers, though, aren't lions more kind of like pack hunters? So where they kind of stalk their prey and then kind of pounce yeah. when they've got an opportunity. So if you was to kind of force a lion into like that cage match kind of environment against the others, would it still have that kind of advantage and the ability to be able to kind of pounce and stalk its prey? Possibly not. Well, that's that's the that's the difference between okay, if if it's if it's out if it's out in nature, as in like re, like say real life, and they all happen to kind of come across each other, even though. They're and they're not in the same parts of the world. The, that's the thing. Uh, lions are ambush hunters. Yeah. So in a one-on-one environment, I don't think the lion would probably do as well as either the silverback or the bear. Well, so the silverbacks are not known to. They're known to only be threatening. Despite uh, an average silverback can lift about ten times its weight, which which is about 4,000 pounds. Okay. So they can literally, I mean, if you think about a chimp, which is much, much smaller, there's been many circumstances where they, they, they get violent. Yeah. And, and they were, they've literally ripped people's arms and faces off. Yeah. Like it was like they were Mr. Potato heads. Yeah. You know, now now multiply that times a whole lot more to to a freaking silverback. But the thing is, it usually just shows its teeth and uses a dominant position to to scare it off. It doesn't it doesn't actually take it'll end up running mm. away. I think that's probably where the the silverback and the bear will kind of be very similar. I think you would kind of like have this omitting the lion for now i think you'd have this kind of scenario where you'd have like in the left court, silverback gorilla on the right we've got the grizzly bear they're just like kind of beyond i can just imagine they're both on their hind legs kind of arms in the air kind of daring each other out kind of trying to intimidate the other one so then actually you know maybe the underdog the lion isn't so much of an underdog at all because i can imagine right. like the, the two the two big ones are going to be there kind of intimidating each other and the lion's going to be saying, I ain't taking this shit, and just like kind of like catch them both off guard and kind of go for the juggler and take them both out. So know, maybe, yeah, the lion's, so, maybe the lion's got a bit of a better chance than I uh, initially thought. Yeah, I, th- I think the one you think right off the bat is like, which one's the strongest? Okay, well, the gorilla, the gorilla's the strongest. But he's but another advantage, like us as humans, we're, we're pretty weak. In, in comparison to many, many spe- other species of animals, but we're top of the food chain because of our uh, intelligence level. Yeah. Even even the dumb ones, uh, you know, we know how to use tools. What well, gorillas are much smarter than the other two. They have the strength. Yeah. But then okay, the lion is the ambush hunter. It also, you know, they have a. They they live in pride, so they usually have multiple. So if if they were to get injured, one was to get injured, they have backup there to to help them and allow them to you know end up being able to heal up until they're able to 
go out back out again. But then he got so they got claws, they got the teeth, but then now you got the, the the grizzly bear who's huge, very strong, quite fast, especially for its size. But it, it has a lot more endurance than the the lion. Lions are are faster; they can run about fifty miles an hour, about their top speed, and and grizzlies are about thirty five ish. But yep. they can they can run about twenty five miles an hour for a very 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 long time, whereas the lions can't. They also have the teeth, the strength, and four to six inch Freddy Krueger claws hmm. that can that can literally just shred you open. But and they're also they don't kill by going for the throat. They literally just pin you down and eat you alive. Yeah. As opposed to the the lion that's you know goes goes for the throat to kill you and then and then feast. So I don't really know which way this goes because I would like I say I would say like you I can see like the bear and the the silverback kind of like I say hind legs trying to intimidate each other. The lion wants to take its chance, so it kind of pounces on one of them. But as to which one it pounces on, I don't know. Well, not not if they're all meet up at the same time. I'm talking like if it was, it's it's one on one, no matter what. Okay. So put it put it in that context. Not, yeah. I, didn't, I want to make it seem like they were all in. I thought, I, thought, I thought I thought it was going for like a triple threat. Like who, uh, who comes out that, on top of would, a triple that threat? Would definitely be interesting. I think the the grizzly would go up on his hinds, make himself hind legs, make himself look bigger, and and hoping that you know the other two would leave. And they could go on about their business because typically, I mean, grizzlies are more aggressive than than say black bears. Black bears would typically go out of their way to avoid you, hmm. even though they could absolutely shred you. Yeah, but grizzlies will straight up attack you and eat you for food, like like polar bear, polar bears even more so. Like if they, if they see you, you're you're food, you're done. But I think out in the in nature in the real world, I think the lion would take it because of how the other ones actually go about in reality. How they tend to go for the easy easy meals and the and the and just kind of intimidate their you know their competitors away. You know, and like even even when uh, two grizzlies fight. There's never been a recorded killing between one. They've never killed each other. They've been hurt and stuff, of course. But they one has never killed another. One just ends up backing down and going away. And then that one, t- that because that, of territorial, of course. Lions, on the other hand, when they're fighting for that pride, they're also fighting for the, the lions they had with, with the female. So they, they're usually, one of them ends up dying and then that that the one that died the the winner kills its cubs yeah as well to not have his lineage live on i mean the thing is i, I guess i can see that like the lion the lion's got like the advantage i think of the, the initial sort of speed so i think it would be able to kind of pounce and on either the the bear or the grit or the silverback no matter which one it was kind of like taken but although they're generally quite passive i do think like the strength of the gri- the grizzly bear would just kind of like or, or the silverback would be able to kind of like just like n- knock it off kind of thing and then be able to kind of dominate it whether or yeah. not it would fall into its no because it, would it would it fall into its kind of natural state of kind of like it's instinctual the the, the yeah. instincts they have that's 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 the difference. Given that it's quite so passive's probably not the right word, but passive when it comes to confrontation, I wonder if it would just kind of maybe like overthrow the lion and then retreat sort of thing so that it kind of like tries to keep itself safe, in which point the, the lion would probably just like chase it down and, and come yeah. in for a second attack. So, yeah, I, I kind of feel like potentially the lion would probably come out on top based on like the speed i, I don't i don't think the, the, yeah, silver, the ambush the, and the speed 
yeah, I don't think the either the silverback or the bear would be able to kind of overcome that speed. And I think the lion would potentially catch both of them off guard oh, before sure. they get a chance to kind of retaliate. So I'm going to say lion comes out on top. Yeah, I think in a natural, like as as they are, like their their instincts as they are, despite the the seemingly overwhelming strength and power of the other two, the lion is just so much more aggressive, and that's that's its ability. It's it trains from the time it's cub, it's a cub to to fight. Yeah, and and to survive, they have to take down insanely crazy animals. I mean, those those animals they take down are are seriously dangerous. I mean, they're taking down hippos, yeah, and and rhinos and things. I mean, it's ins- yeah, it's insane. But um, aren't hippos like the most technically the most dangerous creatures on the planet like, because like their force of their Jaw, yeah, they kill, jaw they kill and... more people than anything any any other animals. Yeah. Like, yeah, they they're just yeah. I mean, they're they're way fast. People think they're slow. Uh, uh-uh. uh they're they're fast. They they run on the bottom of of whatever water body of water they're in. They literally run on the bottom and then they jump up and come out and boom, whatever boat you're in is done. If you're in the water, you're food. I mean, yeah. They're they're insane. That's a that's a whole another battle. But then now, okay, take out take out the the natural instincts they have, and have it so that they can be like us humans and go, okay, hey, knock. I'm putting you in this cage with uh, this other person who's just this MMA fighter. We're gonna be like, uh, uh, shit, no, please, <laughs> no. Yeah, they have trained, you haven't, but you must fight them. No rules, go. You're going to be like, well, I, I, I'm just going to do whatever I can. You know, so like, you're going to use all the strength you can. You're going to go for any eye gouges and what, you know, whatever you can possibly do. So if you have that same mentality for those same animals, and he put them one one versus one. They're, I, I'd say by sheer strength alone, I, you know, I, I, I go back to what a lot of people originally think the gorilla, due to intelligence and the the absolute sheer strength. Because it, if it if it grabs nose, it's going after you, and yeah. it's going to be it's going to be aggressive towards you as opposed to just trying to scare you off. Or scare off its opponent, then it's gonna it's it's gonna be smart. It's it's pretty quick. It's they're maneuverable, and then all they gotta do is grab a hold of you, and you're done. Because the, literally, the, the grizzly bear they can just rip off four legs off, rip the head off. Same, and of course, same with the lion. I mean, it would just be a matter of just ripping them yeah. limb, by, limb by limb. I mean. And then I think the grizzly would have pretty good shot uh, against the lion. So I think, of, to me, I think it would kind of go if you if they had that kind of mentality, like I must fight. You know, I want to be aggressive in here and do whatever it takes and use my abilities to the best of my advantage. There'd be a shot with the grizzly because it's quite strong and the claws are, are a huge factor. But just the sheer strength and intelligence of the gorilla i feel like it gives it a gives it an edge overall as long as it doesn't get like an artery slashed or yeah. something like something like that but i think it's possible for any of them to win depending, you know just like you could have a non-trained person fight a, a trained person and get a lucky shot in and and win a fight but uh, the other, the next thousand times, you would be, they would have their skull beaten in every single time. Yeah, but so, like I say, I think, I, I think it, I would always put the lion kind of second, and it would, to, to, like I said before, it it would kind of depend on who the lion decided to pounce on and attack first. So I feel like whoever the lion was fighting first, then whether it be the grizzly or the silverback, the other one would just kind of 
like step in and, and come in for kind of like seconds once the, the initial fight's kind of done and dusted. So, I mean, I would, I would kind of agree with you that you know, based on that we are descendants from chimps, then kind of like the gorillas probably got a bit more intelligence than anybody else. So, well, we're not we're not descendants from chimps. They're we're, they're 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 relatives. Well, like they, I don't know. They, they, when you, when you look at all those sort of like evolution videos and things, you know, we were we were pretty pretty chimpish um, many many moons ago. Where we came from, uh, they're they're extinct. Uh, we're we're actually we're we're distant relatives. Okay. So to be fair, if you look it up, uh, just to yeah, because a lot of people get that get that confused that oh, we came from monkeys or this or that the other. No, we we didn't. There, they, you can look at DNA and you know certain certain ones have a closer DNA ma- match to us than others, but they're still well far away from they're on a different timeline like they're on a different uh family tree uh, a branch of the family tree so, okay but anyway all right well um anybody listening let us know your thoughts down in yeah. the comments as well let us know who you think would win in a um, scenario where we see a lion a bear and a grizzly bear and a silver back gorilla interesting to see what you guys think on it yeah, based on either a the, the their natural instincts and and or b the other side to where they are trying to win, like they're not just going on instincts. Say the the two different ways, like two different mentalities. But anyway, yeah, I like to I like to see other people's thoughts on that because it's been heavily discussed and disputed and. And stuff from what I've seen, and it's always it's, I always find it interesting, even though it's it's a silly topic because, but it, but at the same time it's fun. Yeah, <laughs> to yeah. me, I guess. But anyway, um, okay, so this is a, this is kind of like a really weird thing that I'm going to kind of branch onto here. Oh, that and, sounds perfect. Well, it, it's weird for the sense that those people that know me know that this is kind of like completely against my like who i am and and how i've been for years and years and years but um over the, like the last kind of like month or so i've um i've actually started like picking up books and and reading books what um yeah it, it's it's mad it's like something i've never done before so for those anybody that like doesn't know uh, or hasn't been around for a long time I, I'm not really much of a reader myself. I myself feel I'm a very slow reader. So for me to kind of like read a book is kind of like a, a bit of a chore in, in a sense, because it like takes me probably, it, well, it could take me like five, 10 minutes to like read like a, a few pages, whereas like somebody else could like probably like skim through a book. But it's like really weird. Like Ariella came through, probably about must be about like three or four weeks ago and like she had a book in her hand and she always does this like she'll bring a book through and like she'll make out that she's reading it for a bit and then it will just get put on the side and she'll not touch it again for a while but i kind of like thought you know what i'm just gonna i'm gonna pick that up and i'll you know flick for a couple of pages and then before i knew it, i'd kind of like actually finished the whole book which is like i say it's for me it's like completely out of character for me and i'm actually like really enjoying it so I've actually been reading the um, the first. Well, I finished the first one, the the Harry Potter books. So I've I've read the first one, and I'm uh, over halfway through the second one now as well. And it's it's really interesting for me because I'm kind of with the Harry Potter book, especially. I'm kind of like doing it backwards to how everybody else did it. So like I've watched the film many many years ago and seen kind of like. How do I my best it? So, first of all, I, I kind of like I know the story from the film, 
but when you read a book you get so much more about the story and you learn so much more that you they they don't portray in the films oh yeah well you can't you can't really convey everything from a book to film no. it's, i mean you, you would have like a a, a mini series if yeah. they even attempted to do it but yeah but what what I always I also kind of like find, found really interesting at points is like some some of the details that I picked out from the book I f was really surprised that they're not in the film because there's like some really like interesting like pieces of information that they cover which I'm in, in in the film anyway um the the second thing that I kind of found interesting was, and because again, because I've done this the wrong way around, it's like, I suppose when you've seen a film based on a book, you kind of like lose the, how do I put this? You lose a sense of the discovery in the book. And by what I mean by that is when you're reading a book for the first time and it's like uh, something brand new and, and you don't know anything about it, you're like reading about the characters and what they look like and how they act. And you're kind of like trying to picture it in your head as to kind of like, okay, what does this character look like? And you know, you're trying to visualize everything. But watching like the film and then reading the book kind of ruins all that because you've already got a picture of, of what the character looks like and how they act. And so I guess kind of like it, it ruins a bit. But I guess, like, to kind of put a question and, and, like, bring up some discussion about it with you, Deathwish, is, like, uh, are you much of a reader yourself? Uh, do you, like, read any kind of, like, novels or anything? And, you know, what's your kind of take on, like, the going from, like, novel to film kind of thing? I, I used to be a huge reader, uh, especially in, like, uh, mystery. I used to read a lot of Alfred Hitchcock, uh, you know, just, I don't know, I had a, a, lot, a lot of different things anyway. I, it seems like when I got into teenage years, high school, I was just doing so many other things. I just kind of didn't make time for it anymore. Like, I, I didn't have time, and I didn't really read it at all for years. And But now, you know, like, say, the last 25 years, I I don't think I've read. I think I've read like one, no, one or two books, and the most of my reading is is online. Like I, I'll I'll go and look up stuff, and I'll I'll read actual, um, you know, full full length. What would be a book, but online. Yeah. Just, but I, I do kind of prefer the the paper part, and I kind of I've kind of gotten like you to where. Or I, th I think a similar thing for me, even back then when I used to read all the time, when I start, if I can't get into it quick enough, then I don't want to read. Okay. So that, that was always the hardest thing for me. Like if I started reading and it kind of grabbed my attention uh, within, I'll say, the first chapter, then I, I, I'm just going to, I want to read and yeah, my my. My mind, I, I picture the whole thing in my head. I picture just like I'm I'm watching a movie as I read. You know, I, I remember especially like of mice and men and things like that. That I had I had very clear. I I still even have the images of what I remember picturing back then. Yeah, um, and like eighth grade, you know, when I read that one and. And then I've then I see I've seen the movie afterwards. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's. And some things are actually pretty darn similar to what I was picturing and stuff like that. But yeah, I, I definitely get where you're coming from with the. It, it if you see the if you see the movie first, your brain is automatically going to go to those images when you come across that that scenario or situation or when they're describing something and you're going, oh, they're talking about this movie star who plays that character and now i'm picturing them instead of what the what i would be picturing based on what the words are telling me yeah but but yeah but now i have to say i haven't been as much of a, a book reader since high school really I, I, I tend to read a lot of uh, other other stuff that's that's uh i guess more on the 
uh, nonfiction side. Yeah. Now, and looking to to understand more about certain things that I, you know, just trying to learn more and uh, to, to try to grasp some kind of concept of, like, say, uh, space time and gravity and you know so I, i'm a I'm, I'm a big science person in general just a fan and so yeah I, I, I watch a lot of videos on that stuff and and i and i read a lot about it and but i'm i'm still a, a, a complete idiot you know <laughs> when it when it when it comes to it but i i do have an, enough of of an understanding that I definitely have a better grasp than I, than people who didn't like say major or take it in college and things like that and become an astrophysicist or, or whatever, you know, compared to the average person. And I, I definitely have a better understanding, I think. And so yeah, I enjoy, I enjoy that side of it, but yeah, I, I don't really read stuff that, that tends to, be made into movies. I'll just watch the movie and that, and that's the end of it. So yeah, uh, but I, but I think it's good that you're taking it up because it, it it is. I think it's so much so much better when you can read the story because you're you're, you're seeing it, you're reading it how it was meant to be, as opposed to. The chopped up, edited, cut down to fit within ninety minutes to a couple hours in a movie. Yeah, I mean, and I and I get that they they have to cut a lot out of a book because of usually depending on the genre of the book, you know, it could just be like the limitations. You know, if you're in a fantasy world, and although obviously CGI and everything has got quite advanced in this day and age, but there's not everything that a book describes that you can make happen, I guess, um, on the, on the big screen kind of thing. But yeah, yeah, no, I've just, like I said, I, I just, I've always wanted to read more, but like I say, just not being a fast reader has always been like a massive turnoff for me. It's like just spending all that time and, you know, I have even in the past gone to audiobooks rather than just like flicking through paper. I bought some the uh, there's some alien franchise books like the, with some stories. I don't know how canon they are, but in between the the first and second movies, apparently, like Ripley goes off to this other place and the alien shows up, and then there's another one that describes how the incident unfolds at Hadley's Hope, which is the location of the second film. But again, like, even though it's an audio book and it's being acted out fully, I still don't kind of feel like you get the full level of detail that you would get if I read the book. So, yeah, uh, yeah no, it's, it's, it's definitely kind of like something that I've been going into. And it's, I don't know, I, I guess it kind of, it's a nice break in a way to not that I spend a lot of time on it anyway, but it's like, it's an excuse to put my phone down yeah, and actually do something. That's not just looking at a screen or watching the TV. And I don't know, it kind of, I guess reading kind of makes me feel a little bit more cultured, I guess. Does that make sense? Uh, uh, yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I, kind of i kind of forget about it but literally I, for, I forget about reading a book you know mm. in general and yeah. then and until i like like some you know somebody brings it up like you have or or like somebody mentions one or something and i'm like oh, okay i need to get that and yeah i think the last one i read was uh christopher hitchens i can't remember the na name of his book i'm been probably 10 years since i read it but uh extremely well written and yeah it's just it's it's something that you know i've seen him in discussions and things and and talk about you know things and the way his mind works and stuff yeah and it, but it but it's completely different reading it through his written word 
but 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 yeah, I've, I've just nothing's really intrigued me enough, I guess. Yeah. To to, to read it, especially like Harry Potter. Uh, I haven't even seen the movies. I've seen probably part of the first one or pieces pieces here and there. But yeah, it, I don't know. It just I would probably enjoy it. You know, if I, if I if I did actually go ahead and sit down and take the time to watch it, uh, I would probably enjoy it. But I don't think I would ever read it. I mean, I wouldn't. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm like massively. You know, I wouldn't say I'm like a massive Harry Potter fan. I mean, we took the kids this year to the Harry, the Warner Brothers Studios, to go and like have a look at around like all the making of it and everything this year. But I, I did kind of like find myself after I finished the first book. I one of the first things I actually did was I actually went and watched the first movie on the back of reading the first book. So I was really kind of like intrigued on how much was actually in there, and that's kind of like where I kind of noticed a lot of the what I felt was like a lot of the core details and some of the descriptions of certain aspects of the uh, of, of the book were kind of missing from uh the film but yeah i mean I, i'm like i said i'm no nowhere near a uh a massive harry potter nerd or anything but it was just one of those things like i said uh, it was lying around i decided i was gonna pick it up see uh whether i enjoyed it or not and you know one book later, I've uh, moved on to the next. So, well, that's yeah. how it starts. Yeah, my 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 old sister in law, uh, ex sister in law, she, she probably read one to two books a day, every single day. Okay. Uh, and yeah, I mean, she she went through them fast. It's not like she spent all day doing it because she would, you know, she cooked and cleaned and all that stuff, and uh, you, you know, she. But she she would blow through them like I think she read in the evening and then like maybe first thing in the in the morning drinking coffee yeah and then do other things during the day but yeah she would she would at least read definitely one at least one book a day and I was blown away she she showed me one time her walk in closet <laughs> opened it up and I mean I. It was. She could have had her own library. She literally could have started her own library. Okay. I was, I was freaking blown away by how many freaking books were in there. I'm like, oh my god! And she was like, yeah. Uh, my brother didn't know how many books she had actually bought. <laughs> <laughs> Which was crazy because I mean there was thousands and thousands of dollars of books in there that yeah. she had gone through. <laughs> It's like holy crap, but anyway, yeah. Uh, I think you know, teach teach their own, and I I do enjoy reading if I if I get into it. But yeah, it's for me. If it's kind of, it's kind of like a movie. If I'm not into it pretty quickly, if it's something that something doesn't grab me, and, and it's not like I have a short attention span because I I just watched a man called Otto last night, and and that that's. Well, with credits and everything, two hours, five minutes. Yeah. That's that that same like it felt like thirty minutes to me. Okay. It, it, you know, I don't know if you've watched it, but No, I haven't. Uh it's a it's a good movie. Uh, you know, I don't th well, like just like any movie, it's not for everybody. But it, you know, Tom Hanks such a great actor. But the but the story was really, really well done and uh it, it just felt real. You know the characters were great, I think, and and the acting was superb, and and it yeah, it just it, I don't know. I mean, I was I was sucked in pretty quickly. And yeah, I guess it went once I am like it. I was like, wow, it's it's almost it's almost it's almost over, or you know, it is over. Crap, it's been two hours already. Jeez. Yeah, I but, mean, I think that's 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 always a sign that like you enjoy something that you're watching is when you kind of just sat there, you're watching it. And before, you know, like you say, there's like an hour and a half, two hours has passed. And it's like, geez, where has that time gone? Uh, I, I always feel like that is a good indicator that you 
really enjoyed the film. Yeah, you know, you were completely invested. And, yeah. and I know I was. I mean, I was totally invested in his character and, and his life. And and I, I felt like I was, you know, I, I guess a lot, some people can either, can can vibe with me on on that, like where you feel like you're kind of in a just kind of in a a bubble. Look, you're outside looking in. You're literally there almost. Yeah. And yeah, because they're, they're so into it. And whereas other ones, it's kind of like, ah, oh, gotta go to the bathroom. Pause. Yeah, there, I did not pause. I did not. Nothing. I watched this straight through without even thinking about. I don't even. I don't. I don't even think I took a sip of water. <laughs> but yeah, you didn't go to the bathroom, and then when you stood up, you realised you were sat in a big puddle of uh, something. <laughs> joke. I joke. That's why if you're gonna watch a movie that's two hours long, you you wear depends. <laughs> you know, so that way you can just go as needed. <laughs> Get a catheter inserted, it's fine. You'll be fine. Oh yeah, that's that's a joy. I do that for the fun. Yeah, who doesn't who doesn't get a yeah, catheter yeah. just for the for the fun of it? Yeah. Especially like the ones with the with the little spikes on them. Yikes. <laughs> oh dear. So aside from uh a new reading hobby that seems to be coming along, anything anything else like that that you you've started to do different not really um this year i've been a lot more invested in my own kind of personal development so i've been spending a lot more time doing training and courses and different bits and pieces so even if i kind of feel like it's foundational level knowledge i've kind of been doing training because I feel like it's like so for example I'm I'm completely 100% self-taught with C sharp and I use C sharp pretty much every single day in my job and I've just actually completed a couple of like beginner or foundational level kind of training programs and and I've got a actual Microsoft certificate for one of them because I found a Microsoft course that was doing it. And although I kind of know probably 90, 95% of everything that's being covered, it's still really quite interesting because I found that there was just the occasional odd bit of knowledge or things that I didn't actually know. Yeah. Whereas like some people might say, oh, well, what's the point in doing foundational? You know, you've got kind of like, yeah, you've been doing it for all you do, like, years. For, I don't know, 15-odd years, you know, why do you need to, to learn foundational? But I think, like I say, when you are completely self-taught in something like that, there's always a, for me, there's always a worry in the back of my mind that, yes, I'm doing things, but am I doing things properly? Or, or the most efficient way possible. Yeah, so... I, I, like I say, I, I find it really interesting even just to cover those foundational level sort of courses and, and bits of material. So I think this year I've done, I've been doing like a lot of, I've invested in Unity courses. So I've been like doing some stuff on Unity. I've done a Microsoft exam in um, Azure Fundamentals, like to kind of like try and branch into a bit of cloud stuff. I've been learning about um, entity framework for .NET Core. Don't want to bore everybody, but I've always developed my applications with SQL Server, and I've always done all the SQL myself. So moving over to entity framework is quite interesting because all of that SQL stuff is handled by the code you've written, so it kind of like speeds up the process of developing so i kind of found that that's quite an interesting tool to to, to kind of have, have done with but yeah i've done I'm, I'm on my fifth course for the year i'm hoping to get like this this fifth kind of course done and dusted but let's well, say I've, yeah, I've, I've never thought to call it sql i've just always called it sql <laughs> i've always called it sql but the reason i use sql instead of sql is because 
I know that when I speak to 90% of other people who deal with programming and stuff, they all call it SQL. So SQL seems to be the more um, accepted name for it. I, okay, I've, yeah, always, I've, I've always called it SQL. Out loud. I've, I've always called it SQL. It. Always. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I've, I've never actually heard somebody say it out loud that I can think of. So yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I've never even thought about saying it that way, but yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, a lot a lot of the the resources and, and videos and stuff that I've been covering this year, they'll, they'll call it SQL or MySQL or whatever. But no, I'm yeah. I'm 100 with you. I've always called it SQL Server or MySQL, and I've always seen it as like a the acronym, which stands for obviously stru structured query language. And with it being an acronym, I yeah, it kind of it it. I remember the first time I heard it was actually when I first, soon after I graduated and I was in my first job after graduating and there was some outside development work going on. This was kind of like before I kind of, like my first post out of university was actually more like an IT management kind of role. So I was more dealing with hardware, even though I'd got a degree in the more the software side of it. And these guys were coming in and they were like, oh, yeah, we're building this and we're going to do it on a SQL server. And I was like, SQL server? What's that? Is, is that different to SQL? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, um, it, that, that'd be the same way. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, like I say, I've been busy with that. I've, I've got one that I'm really interested in. I'm going to hopefully branch into it next year because I don't, you know, we're running out of time this year now to get anything else in my belt but um i've been toying with the idea of like um cyber security and like ethical hacking kind of side of things so yeah. i've got a a couple of courses to to look at next year so that's kind of like where i'm going but yeah that's what i've been trying to do this year make more of a conscious effort to work on my own personal development for my job because you know it is a constantly evolving domain yeah. which if you stand still for too long you get left behind so well and we, everything you've said you're doing is like a hundred percent of of what people should absolutely do hmm. it, you know i've i've i don't know anybody that has started things in their field or even if it's outside of their scope of their job that they did not end up benefit from in, from later on. And like, I mean, you've been at that place for quite some time. Whereas yeah. I don't know, ever here, I mean, people are switching every one to three years. Yeah. Uh, just, just to get another bump up in money. And, and the ones that do the, do the best are doing exactly what you're doing. They're yeah. taking, they're taking their classes. They're learning more, more areas, like you said, like cloud or this, that, the other, you know, learning more about a different language or this, that, the other. And yeah, all it does is improve your, your odds of getting another job if you, if you, cause it's competitive. Yeah. So, and, but then also, yeah, I mean, it just, it just gives you a lot more versatility. It also helps you, just helps you in the long run. So yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. So uh, what about you then? Have you been uh, doing anything new recently? Or you know, this year? Opened the, the scope a little bit, a bit wider than just recently? Have you been kind of like getting into anything new? Uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get back into uh, uh, working out again. Uh, I, I got so into work back in, back in my, my mid to late 20s that because I used to go to the gym five days a week, yeah, and you know, and I was I was always an athlete, but then the gym was a new thing for me. I never went to the gym. I was just very very active, so I was always, you know, I was I was pretty cut. You know, I had low low body fat percentage, and I was just in good shape, just doing all the stuff I did. Plus plus the work I did, which was literally like a, a gym workout. But then when I started, when I was about 21, started going to the gym a few days a week. Then I ended up being five days a week and just lifting weights. And then I would get 
cardio after I left. I would run, stuff like that. I'm trying to get back into that, and I want to see if I can get ripped again being uh, 50 years old. <laughs> Yeah, it takes it takes a lot more. I was gonna say, I, I'm I'm told I'm told by a lot of reliable sources that the older you get, the harder it gets to do. So, yeah, you gotta you gotta work a lot harder. And like back then, I didn't watch my diet. It was I could I put on muscle. I put on twenty pounds of muscle in probably five or six months, and I was I was absolutely shredded, and it was it was cool. I felt great and all that. Yeah, I, I want to be able to. I'm not. I'm never going to be able to feel like that again, <laughs> because I'm. Not, I'm never going to be 21 again. But I can definitely feel a lot better than I am. Like, because I've I've had back issues ever since all the times I've been t-boned and rear-ended. That that could be another topic by itself. <laughs> uh, seriously, the but yeah. Anyway, I mean that's about it. I mean I'm just. As far as self improvement and stuff like that, just trying to one uh, eat better and get back into the routine of, of of working out and and just strengthening my physical as well as my mental. Yeah, keep us uh, keep us posted as how you going though, buddy. You know, I'll be hopefully. Uh, I'm sure you'll. Uh... Get your head down and and get into it. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll watch this. Watch this space. We can we can picture the the mystery man on the internet that nobody knows what he looks like with this ripped body. Just imagine yeah. like a a ripped body with a paper bag over the head. So like, yeah, <laughs> big question mark on the front of the paper bag. What does this well, guy there... look like? He's ripped. <laughs> well, there there was there was that video of me on the trampoline when I was sixteen. That was that was on YouTube at one point. What on your old channel? I believe so. So it's it's lost to the ether then. It's it's lost to YouTube. Death wish you you will you will forever remain the enigma. That uh, the man without a face. Well, I, I I try to keep it that way. But it's 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 quite weird though. It's like I, I've often thought about this for me when i'm kind of always in front of a camera and everybody knows like what i look like to think that i don't know what anybody else looks like for the yeah. majority of people is just it's yeah it's bizarre you, you kind of like you do kind of like picture and, and try it kind of like it's, it's the reverse of what i said about the books really it's like i know yeah. who you are and i've spoke to these people either via voice chat or via text chat and then you build up this this picture of what they look like. It's like you, I can just, I don't know. I just imagine you being this guy who's got like this mustache and yep. I don't know, almost like a no mustache. Mm, okay. I, well. I, I'll tell you this. I, I keep my hair cut fairly short, not, not Mars, but pretty short. And I'd never, I don't use a razor. I use a, a, a basically a trimmer. So okay. I, I never, I never go fully sc- Skin clip, yeah, skin yeah. Clothes. I always have like full stubble. Okay, you just completely destroyed the image I had of you in my head. Now, <laughs> I've always pictured you like having a mustache, just like sitting there, <laughs> some some guy with a mustache sitting there knocking back like twenty beers a night, sort of thing. No, nope. haven't done that in a while. But I, I've, <laughs> I've never ever had a mustache. Well, te- technically not by itself. I've, no, I, I have done like a goatee kind of thing, but yeah, but yeah, I haven't done that in a long time either. I just, I just kind of, uh, because my razor just my 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 skin is pretty sensitive, so I I just got into the habit of shaving somewhat close to where it's stubbly, and because of my ha- my hair color, it, it's not well, especially now that I'm my, my facial hair is turning gray. So it, you don't really see it, yeah. Unless it's in the light. So yeah, he's no hope for me then. I mean, well, I said no hope for me. Mine, mine's already turning gray at thirty-eight. So I mean, jeez. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it was late late thirties, early early forties when I started getting signs of gray. But I like my 
Yeah, my my hair itself, I have. Uh, I, I guess. I, I think it's uh, genetic grain. I'll call it. Uh, I think I get it from my mother. Like when when she, she when she started to grow, she had spots on the side, like towards her ears, and then a, and then a patch on her bangs. Right, and that's kind of kind of how mine came in and that's kind of how it stayed my most of my hair is still whatever color it is yeah i've um i've started to notice a few uh grays coming in on like the side of my head Katie's also she's like she's suffering quite a lot like down her the middle in the part and everything she's like just getting like blocks of gray and she keeps like trying to cover it up with different colors but um <laughs> it's, yeah the, the more she puts on the grayer it goes it seems so I just said, love, love, why don't you just, just go gray with it? With, with, just go gray and embrace it. But no, she's like, I can't do that. I'm not old enough yet. So. <laughs> yeah, um, no, women can get away with coloring in their hair forever, really. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think guys, you know, there's guys that do it, but I think may, I think most guys, at least most of that now, just, just let it go however it's going to go. Yeah, it, it really doesn't. It doesn't bother me at all. You know, if I'm yeah. gonna go grey, I'll go grey. It, 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 honestly, there's yeah, there's same, more same there's same more here. important things in life to worry about. Whether or not I've got a few grey hairs on my head, jeez. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I'm a hundred percent the same. I've never once thought about coloring my hair, except for not at least not because of the grey or any signs of that, but just just to do like something completely different. Like I'm kind of like that blondish, uh, stra well, I guess technically strawberry blonde, but it's kind of brown sort yeah. of ish. <laughs> it's hard to describe, but anyway, yeah, I thought about doing like a, a you know, just switching it up at times, especially when I was younger, when it was a lot lighter and it was like, it was a strawberry blonde. I was a lot more blonde, especially when during the summer when when the sun would bleach my yeah. hair yeah mine mine was the same mine mine used to go ridiculously light in the summer so almost to the point where people used to think that i had like colored it to be fair <laughs> um I, I did have one period back in 2007 2008 i think it was where i i just fancied something different and i did dye my hair just proper bleach blonde which was interesting for a bit but then i was like yeah i can't be bothered anymore let's just go back to how it was that, that, that kind of happened to me by accident one time when i was about 18 19 maybe 18 19 something like that maybe. and i went to my my hair cutter that i've been going to since i was nine and i was like hey can you can you give me the end of summer look so like you know lighten my hair a little bit give me that end of summer look and this was, of course, at the beginning of summer. Yeah. And, and so she she did the thing with the cap and pulled the hair through the holes. Yeah. To, so it, wasn't, it wasn't doing all, all of my hair, but, you know, just pieces, whatever. So it would kind of blend in. And uh, she goes, okay. She looks, she comes over and checks on me and then goes, ah, just a couple more minutes. And, uh <laughs> And then when it was all said and done, and rinsed my hair out, I, I, I turned around and looked in the mirror, and I'm like, "Holy crap!" <laughs> it, was, it was like super blonde. Like I was like, "Yeah, I think those last extra couple minutes or so that you could have left that off." He was like, "Yeah." I, 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 she was like, "I'm, I'm kind of surprised at how much it changed." <laughs> And I was like, oh, no, it's done now. <laughs> so, like, on the topic of, of hair and stuff, so I'm sure, you know, have you had any, like, outrageous haircuts in your time? No, uh, never, actually. I've never, well, uh, other than when I shaved my head bald, if you count that. Okay. Well, I, 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 I did that back in my 20s when I was about 24, 25. Uh, now, at the same time, I shaved my head bald. I pierced my eyebrow, my nose, and I had two earrings in my in one ear. And yeah, it's 
it's it, it was uh that was that was all in one night i did it myself <laughs> uh needless yeah. to say there was copious amounts of uh, uh liquor drank that night mm. <laughs> that, that really surprised me honestly really surprised yeah. me that was i was i mean uh, 24 then i mean i've i can join you i mean i've been in the complete skinhead club i was there for a good few years to be fair my when i first went to uni in 2004 i was rocking the literally skin bald head like big like proper razored on top of my head which which was interesting because i remember one time i was doing it and i'd run out of my normal razor so i used uh one of those little or well, you've got them over there the little disposable razors yeah like in plastic and I, I only did it the once because I took a massive freaking chunk out of me every one of those things. It's um, <laughs> not the same as using a uh, like a regular razor. But um, I remember I just finished, I think I just about to finish my exams at secondary school. So I was probably about 16 and I was around my friend's house one and we just decided one day that um, I was going to have a mohawk. So, yeah. yeah his, I was, was going to guess mohawk. I, I sat in my friend's kitchen while his mum kind of gave me a mohawk just out of the blue, which was interesting. But um, yeah, I've I've had a couple of crazy haircuts for sure. Yeah, mine have been pretty standard. The old, the old uh, turn the sides back and then the front, either from left to right or right to left. Yeah, you know, just standard Clark Kent kind of. I remember a phase that was going through when I was about 12, 13, like everybody in the school had one pretty much. All the boys had one. It was like a, you kind of had like the the undercut. I don't know if you know what that is, but you kind of like just have a, a parting down the middle and you, you kind of like brush your hair so like hang down either side, but then all underneath the hair was kind of like shaved all the way up nearly to the top of your, your hairline. So yeah, that's like popular with, a lot of girls where they shave the one side of yeah. their head, but then they can they either comb the rest all over to expose it or either a different style to cover it up. Yeah. Yeah. My my, my youngest did that. But, but the, the takeaway from here is finally, for once, boys did it first. <laughs> yeah. And back in the 90s, we did it, I, I may add, as well. Um. Anyway... I think that's probably a good place to leave this one. I mean, we've been going for nearly an hour and three quarters. Um, have you got anything that you would like to add as a final note, Deathwish? Well, nothing off the top of the, the gray matter other than, uh, yeah, you know, glad glad you're back to being a functional exoskeleton for your nervous system. Yeah, I'm I'm functional at the minute. I may may not be next week, but I'll um I'll talk about that with you off air. I don't think that's a conversation I want to particularly have on the podcast. Um anyway, uh just from me, um for anybody who is not uh been on Twitch recently, uh and following on from last month, you'll know that I said I was going to be starting the Talos Principle 2 at some point. Well, I can confirm that last Wednesday we did indeed finish the playthrough of Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories, which means our next game we are playing on Twitch is not Super Meat Boy, if you've been watching the Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories, that somebody was constantly shouting through my late last three episodes on YouTube. It yeah, will be the that was. You need to uh, ban them. Uh, it will be the Talos Principle 2. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be starting... I possibly, depending on when this episode goes out, I may be starting next week, which will be the 29th of November. But depending on things that are going to be happening, I may not be starting until the following week. So make sure you keep an eye out. If you want to join the live streams, I'll probably send messages out in places to announce that I am going to start playing it. And other than that, all that leaves me to say is thank you very much, everybody, for listening. And, of course, at the time of recording this, 
happy Thanksgiving to everybody over in America. Hope you have a fantastic day, especially you, Deathwish. Enjoy your time with your folks. Yeah, we were supposed to have about eight people, but it depends on my brother and them. It, it could just be me, my 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 parents, and and my nephew. It could okay. be it could be eight people. It could be four people. We don't know, but regardless, there's plenty of food. So you know, more for well, me, one way or the other. <laughs> well, whatever you get up to, and how many people there, dude, have a good have a good time. Um, oh, yeah, will. enjoy enjoy. Thanks. Thank enjoy you. the food enjoy the festivities and um you know if you've got a doggy bag make sure you uh trick it in the post and send it my way i'm always grateful yeah. for some uh, some party food <laughs> yeah still still need to do that yeah send some, uh, send some american stuff over there that y'all can't get or you know the other the other alternative is just get your ass on a plane and come over here for a bit but you know that would, that would be excellent <laughs> Would love to. Anyway, dude, thank you very much as always for joining me. I appreciate it. Thanks for uh, yeah, spending man. this uh, couple of hours with uh, the conversations. I appreciate it. Everybody else, thank you very much for listening. Like I said, and hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back again next month, I'm sure, with a would be a festive podcast, I guess, just before the uh, the Christmas festivities kick off. So, yeah, we'll try and get another one in before the holiday season, but. Until then, guys, thank you very much for watching. I've been Nock. He's been Deathwish. You've been awesome. And until next time, <laughs> take it easy. Bye, guys. Later.